Welcome to the hashtag Proud to be LBUSD podcast. In this episode, I'll be talking to Ms. Stephanie Heilig, the Administrative Assistant for High School and Middle School Choice. Mainly, we'll be discussing how the high school choice process works and what the transition from middle school to high school is like for students in LBUSD. Thank you so much for coming today. Oh, thank you for having me. This is exciting. It's my first podcast. I know it's not the first one for you, so um, you're you're going to lead me through it. This is going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm excited to <laughs> have this conversation. I think um, a good place to start would be just getting a baseline idea of what the high school choice process is. So in general, how does this work for students and parents? Yeah, well, it definitely is a, a great place to start. So I think the, the best place I can start with is to review the timeline that we kind of have laid out for students. So right now, um, it's November. We're kind of in the explore phase, but high school choice really starts really before that. So usually, typically, kids kind of have an idea, you know, seventh grade, sixth grade, where they want to go to high school. And so they prepare, I would say, at the very beginning part of their eighth grade year in the fall, um, getting, making sure their student view is up to date. If they're not a Long Beach Unified School District student, they want to make sure that they've enrolled, that they have a parent right. view account. And then really between October to December is when a student begins to explore different high school programs. Um, we started the kickoff this year with our choice fair, and that was in October where we had all 11 high schools present, and they kind of presented an overview of their programs. And we're just about to start actually tonight. Um, Wilson High School is going to host their first site night. All 11 high schools will host an evening or a day in the, in the case of camps where students can come and they can, you know, be on the campus and they'll meet students, they'll meet coaches and clubs and hear about specific programs and um, the courses of study. And those are held on the campuses where kids can really get a feel for what high school they want to go to. And then from there, um, the application process opens in January. And so students have a window where they can apply. And so they go on with their parents and they apply for their choice of pathways. And then they they kind of get accepted. So something that's probably changed since, well, definitely I was in high school, is all of our students will apply for what we call a pathway. So a pathway is like a small learning community. So you no longer just go to high school and show up and take classes. And so we are wall-to-wall -wall pathways. So a student will come, they apply for a pathway, and then they're accepted into that particular program. And that I think we'll talk a little bit about that, but um, a pathway again is like a small learning community, and it's woven around a theme. So students might pick a pathway connected to the arts, for example, or law, or technology, and so all of those classes really have that theme interwoven through them. And so really, what it begins to do is it gets students connected um, to school, and and it really provides them, I think, a foundation of not only our college readiness, but really ready for careers if, if that's the way they want to choose. So unlike when I was at school, it makes learning, I think, a lot more relevant and fun and, and kids are more successful in learning. So it's pretty cool. It's a neat, neat opportunity that we have in Long Beach Unified. Oh, definitely. And, and on more of the parent side, so what is their role in this process? What can they do for their students? What do they need to do for their students when they're um, in the process of, you know, that transition from middle school to high school? Sure. Well, I mean, it's definitely important. And I think as a parent, I'm a current parent of an eighth grader. I have a 10th grader. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's 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 a unique situation, if, especially if you're a first time parent, if, if it's not your oldest, um, maybe you're used to it by now. But I think, you know, obviously parents have to decide and families, do I want to go to a school that really I, I live close to? Do mm -hmm. I want to go to my residential high school? Do I want to pick a smaller school? And so I think having parents help their kids ask the right questions. Um, thinking about the needs of the child. Like you, you can certainly pick a theme, but you might want to pick a school close to you. So I think the parent's role is to guide, to listen, to really think about um, what their kids are good at. I don't know sometimes if kids really think about, you know, careers as, mm -hmm. as an option. I mean, we all think of, you know, teacher, doctor, lawyer, firefighter. Like when I was a kid, that's what yeah. we thought about. But I think it's important to think about your skills, right? Things that you're good at. So there's a lot of jobs out there that take technology, for example. You may not want to pick a technology pathway, even though you're really good at technology, but maybe you do. So a lot of our, our job market, when you think about the future, really involves a lot of different things. And I think as a parent, it's important to have conversations with your son or daughter or children about you know what you see in them, what, what their strengths are, um, and really what program would, would best fit your needs as a family, but also as an individual too, as they kind of move forward. Because at high school, there's, there's some formidable years and you definitely want your son or daughter to be happy wherever it is that they choose to go. So I think that's a parent's role and just to help really ask those really important questions. Yeah, definitely guidance, especially for yep. 
such young yeah, absolutely. kids. Um, and I know if this might be different for even parents who have been in the school district, have gone to school here, yes. but this program didn't always exist in the district. No. It wasn't always high school choice. So before it was introduced, I know that enrollment was decided based on where students lived and the attendance boundaries of a specific school. So the yep. location would typically, you know, predetermine which high school you would exactly. go to. So tell us a little bit about high, how the high school choice process changed that. You know, how does how is it different now and what's the benefit of this? Yeah, there's actually a lot of benefits and I'm glad you brought that up. Um, I've been in the district for a long time, not always in high school. I actually dug around to try to see what year we started doing high school <laughs> choice. We have, I mean, some records, I mm -hmm. think we were talking about magnet programs and that kind of evolved in that process. But um, it's kind of been around for a bit now. And, and what it enables um, people to do is no matter where you live in, in Long Beach Unified, you get to choose really a, a program that you want to go. Um, it breaks that link between housing and the school that you must attend, and it really allows you to go anywhere. Um, you know, provided that you can get your own transportation there, it really, I think it empowers families and it makes that choice more, more equitable. Um, I think it elevates our, a lot of our schools. It doesn't favor one over the other. So a student from the other side of town can attend any school boundary as long as, you know, they, like I said, they have the means to go there. Um, I think also it, it, you know, as a parent, your, your own children are not alike. Right, so they have different right. needs. Um, we have different schools too. So we have, f we have six comprehensive high schools. We call them the Big Six, which are our traditional high schools that have you know sports and all the clubs. But we also have our smaller thematic high schools that don't use a residential boundary, and those are smaller schools like Renaissance and Browning, and those are still connected to a theme as well. But those don't have a residential boundary, so those schools are one hundred percent school of choice. And so a student that wants to go to those schools, anybody from the district has the option to go to those. So it really gives parents and families more of a choice and they're not bound to their particular school if they feel that, you know, that doesn't suit their needs. And so, um, you know, it, it's not a perfect fit for some and yet it it provides, I, I, like I said, I think options for kids to go where they feel that they're going to be the most successful. So I'm we're really fortunate. We're one of the few school districts that do that. So it, it gives families some options and, and I think elevates all of us to create a more equitable school program for everybody. Definitely. And especially for those thematic schools that are much smaller and much more specialized, it's important that it's not only open to the kids in that area because they might not be interested in that. And Absolutely. there might be students interested in that that are all over the district. Yep. And regarding the location aspect, I know that residential priority is still a factor in the high school process, but that it's important to note that that's very different than the locational boundaries that used to be in place. So how does that work? How can residential priority be a beneficial thing? Yeah, it can be a plus and a minus, mostly a plus. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we, we have laws that say, hey, you're allowed to go to your residential school. So, I mean, certainly if you go to your residential high school, it's easier to get to school because you're in close proximity to that school. Right. So we do give priority to somebody living within that residential boundary. However, with some of our schools, um, the residents would, would if all the residents went, the school would fill with only residents only. So we do want to give, um, you know, other families an opportunity and a choice to really go there. So not all schools have 100% of the residents that want to go there too. Um, but again, I think if you do want to go to your residential school, you can and you get priority. So if I'm applying to a pathway and I live in the Cabrillo area, I'm going to get priority over somebody that doesn't. But with our thematic schools, which don't have a residential priority at all, mm -hmm. it will allow a student who really feels like, hey, I don't want that big traditional high school. It's not a fit for me. I want to go to a smaller school that's, you know, uh, maybe doesn't offer like all the CIF sports, but still make college prep. It's really a little bit more focused. Mm -hmm. um, it will allow those kids to go there, thus opening some spots at, as at a residential, a, a typically heavily residential uh, prioritize school, it it opens up some spots for some kids to go there too. So it could be a benefit. You certainly have, if you, if you live in a particular area, it gives you a leg up on other students that want to go into a particular school. So the other thing to consider too is it's not just the school, it's the pathway that's mm -hmm. there. So like the smaller program and some programs are more popular than others. So for those that are popular, it it will allow certainly kids from from other areas to get into those programs too. So little bit of both, but mostly a benefit. I don't think it's ever going to be a, a hindrance unless uh, a parent, you know, doesn't go through that that process. Then typically that we try to place kids whenever possible at their residential school, just because obviously living there is, it's a lot easier to get to school. But. Right. And it's, yeah, it's definitely a 
plus for those kids who want short travel times and stuff. But also it's not that hindrance that you can't branch out Absolutely. if you want to. Yeah. And it allows the, if the program's really impacted, mm -hmm. it can also allow, you know, other students to get in as well. So, yeah. Yeah. And focusing on the pathways specifically, since that's now a big part of the application, how, how is that part, you know, an important process, important part of, you know, the whole process, like choosing your specific pathway and our students now more than ever applying to a high school or to a specific program? Yeah, that's a fantastic, that's like the million dollar question <laughs> I think that everybody would ask. I would say it's both. So um, some families are going to choose a high school because the high school is either where they went to or a sibling went to or it's their residential high school. And so what they do is they look and then they'll say, okay, well, which pathway or program at that particular school would I best fit into? And so certainly that's one way to shop around for a program. Another way is to maybe consider not necessarily going to your residential high school if, if obviously you have the means to get mm -hmm. to another school is to think about a pathway. And a pathway, the way I, I kind of explain it, a pathway, when you, when you pick it, it's like an ice cream flavor, right? So, or a flavor like, I love ranch. So if I had to pick chips, I'd pick something that's ranch flavored. If I had to pick popcorn, I like ranch flavored, you know, ran anything right. that's ranch flavored, I might go for that. So I think a pathway is a lot like a flavor. So if the, it's the arts, for example, and you love the arts, when you're going into an arts pathway, each of the classes that you take is going to have that flavor infused into those courses. So language arts, for example, English, each student's going to take English, but what you decide to study and what you're going to read and what you're going to take a look at varies from class to class. So a teacher in the arts, for example, might pick some English um, language arts material connected to the arts, whereas somebody technology can choose a piece of literature that's heavily involved with technology. So trying to connect those soft skills of, I mean, everybody needs to learn how to right. read and comprehend, but then tailor it to the needs of that pathway. And so what you get is that flavor infused in all of those classes with the bonus of getting an elective that really teaches you the specific skills for that pathway. So take, for example, like a med bio pathway. The elective that you're going to take is probably, um, maybe it's going to teach you how to, you know, take the pulse of somebody. You're going to go do an internship where you're going to volunteer at St. Mary's Hospital and you're going to learn some of the skills that you would need in that particular pathway. So what it ends up doing is it really exposes students to not only get them ready for college, because it definitely does that, but it also prepares them for those careers. And so students can go into college really understanding a little bit more about a career when they pick a major. So I know a lot of parents get really nervous. They're like, oh my gosh, I'm picking a college major. You're actually not. So any of those skills that you're learning can apply to any of the you know, degrees that you want to get in college. So if I like technology and I'm going to pick technology as my pathway, as I graduate from high school, those skills that I've learned can apply to any kind of career field that I feel like I want to go to in life. And that's really a benefit. It was something I didn't have. And I think it makes learning more relevant and exciting for kids. Like I didn't have that at all. I totally wish high school was a lot like this model because I think I, I would have really, I, I did well in school, but I think I would have liked it even more and really become exposed to a lot of different options out there. And I know for a lot of our students who don't know what they want to do and maybe enter college kind of flailing around and mm -hmm. getting a little bit of, gosh, I don't know what to do. It gives them sort of a taste of what they could do. And hopefully they're picking it in an area that you know, is of interest to them. Yeah. Um, going back to your, your other point with parents, say, hey, what can they do? When you think about pathways, I would certainly try to encourage your student if they're, if they're picking one of those pathways, don't pick it in an area that they're not interested in. So if you don't like the arts, you shouldn't go to an arts pathway <laughs> because it's going to be, you know, arts focused. Right. And so um, that's really important, I think, as parents is to recognize that your kids are different and that schools are, that the model has changed a little bit and it's, it's actually for the better. So um, I, I think that, that again, you, you really have two choices. You can pick a, a high school based on where it is closer to you. But if you consider really that pathway, a lot of those, I think more avenues would be open for students and a lot more opportunities. We have a lot of businesses that are heavily invested in a lot of our programs. I know the Port of Long Beach is working closely with Jordan and Cabrillo and other schools to really provide kids with some options, um, some of them right out of high school and others with you know, some some uh, certificates that they can earn while they're in school that can kind of make them money and hopefully turn into a future career um, down the road. So it, we're doing amazing things. It's it's a really exciting time 
I think, uh, for high schools in Long Beach Unified. Right. And and going back to what you're saying, I can remember even from my process in choosing a high school that I was a little worried at first. I'm like, oh, what am I committing to? Like, this is a huge step to choose a pathway. But it's it's less like that college major that you're talking about and more of just do I want an element of personalization into yeah. my high school, you know, learning. And Absolutely. I think that's great. And you kind of answered my next question with that discussion, like how could that look like? What could that look like in an application? So you could have a student who all of their choices are from the same school and they rank certain pathways. Yep. And with this high school choice, you can also have a student's choices be from completely different schools and you're allowed that element of like tailoring it to your specific need, like how an arts um, invested student could choose all arts pathways yep. from all different schools. And I think that's really cool to have that if you want, if you know what you're going to do. And if you don't, you can... There's Pick so many different like. options at mm -hmm. a school that you want to go to yeah. for location. And it's it's very nice to have all these options now. It is. And I think, too, as a as a and again, I'm, I'm raising two you know, future high schoolers. You're around like minded individuals. And I think that's really important. So you with our schools that are really big, which you can feel like you get lost in a sea of kids, mm -hmm. you're actually in a pathway. So you're in a, a learning community with kids, hopefully that have the same interest as you do. So making friends is a little bit easier when now that we're coming out of COVID, when we think about these social emotional needs of kids, you have students picking a pathway that have the same interest as you. So I think, um, you know, birds of a feather flock together, right? And right. so you have um, a lot of students with those same interests as you do, and you'll be in classes with them and hopefully kind of travel in pods. And so it's not a big sea of who are these people and where do I belong? So I think that sense of belonging is is kind of that underestimated side effect that's really positive of, of our pathways is that kids really begin to feel where they belong and and have some confidence, right, in, in really thinking about what they want to do. And you're free to be yourself because you're around people that are just like you and have picked um, the same pathway as you. And so I think that's a that's an added bonus yeah. to really the pathway model that we have. Definitely. And it adds especially not only an element of like school unity, but you feel a unity within your certain pathway. And it's like you were saying, it's not so much like there's this whole school and I'm one person. It's like, oh, I'm part of this smaller community and it feel, makes you feel very recognized. And, Absolutely. And that also kind of brings us to my next question. You know, how does that um, emphasis on individual programs and individual interests broaden the opportunities for students? So like what can be a benefit aside from just that sense of smaller community and recognizing of individual interests, but how can that benefit, you know, a person with their tailored learning in beyond high school, you know, how can that translate to college years? Yeah. So the the whole linked learning model is it, it's a linked learning approach, but really it's kind of transforming education based on a, a really simple idea. And that is you're going to work harder. You're going to dream bigger if the learning that you have connects with you. Right. And that that learning connects with the world that you see around mm -hmm. you. And so that that's really the model of it. So I, I don't when I was in high school, I, again, wasn't really exposed to a lot of careers till later on, really even in college. Mm -hmm. By then, I've already chosen a major and maybe I switch my mind or, you know, I, I don't want to go into that anymore. So I think that because you get that exposure earlier on um, in a high school it and, and you understand how that particular area kind of drives the economy. So our, our, our pathways that we've chosen in Long Beach Unified – there's 11 different industry areas, and those are really connected with the major industries of, of this area in, in Southern California. And that's really how they were born. And so when you recognize that and you, you feel like you're in the thick of it and you're, you're learning stuff that's extremely relevant to our times right now, you're going to really be, I, I think, interested more in school. And, and it'll inspire for a lot of kids to graduate from high school knowing what awaits them. Um, you know, you, you understand with colleges, hey, yeah, for this particular job, I don't need maybe four years of college, or maybe I do need eight years mm -hmm. of college and, ooh, that's not for me, or <laughs> let me, let's try some different things. But I think aside from that, bes besides that, those hard skills that you get, it's really those those soft skills. You're going to learn how to problem solve. You're going to learn how to communicate. And like everybody needs that. I think every employer would agree, you know, the, the work ethic, all those things are really, really important skills to, to learn. And so as you're a student going through building your confidence, you're going to learn those skills too, no matter what pathway you're in. And that gets really exciting for for kids. And I've, I've seen, I've been in the district long enough to see some of the results of that. Kids are coming out just with more confidence. I, I know what I want to do with my life. And, and um, you know, we're seeing graduation rates increase. 
um, e even in spite of the pandemic. And, and that's exciting. That's really great, especially talking to, to kids that are way more driven than I think I was and really are, are they more confident, but they really kind of know what they want to do. And that's exciting as, as an educator to see that, that growth in our students over time. So yeah, it, it's neat. Really yeah. Exciting. And, and even that emphasis about that, those pathways allows for more specified work-based learning experiences too. And so while you're developing those soft skills, you can get also even more personalized experience that prepares you more for the college path that you're going to choose. Yep. And rather than having, you know, like a work-based learning opportunity for the whole school that might not interest everyone, it's nice to have not only that you get a community within your pathway, but then also it's special preparations for what you could do later in life. So. Well, absolutely. And some of our our, our kids are, are getting internships. Some are paid, some are unpaid, but they're turning into job opportunities through the summer or during their senior year or right after school that they can really benefit them. It's I know how hard it is to go out and look for a job, but I think with a lot of the employers, especially the local ones who are really invested in it, you know, when when you when you take the time to invest in a student and you see that their skills and what they're able to do, you're most likely to hire somebody you know rather than somebody you mm -hmm. don't. And some of our kids are landing some pretty amazing jobs um, that are really faring very well for them. So it, yeah, it's really exciting. It's, yeah, it's really really neat. And that even brings you back to your point earlier about how it can sometimes even feel like you're choosing a college major, but really if you choose a pathway based on your interests, the fact that you have those sort of tailored um, opportunities toward that broad interest, it can even introduce students to pathways that they wouldn't think of. Yep. And within that certain pathway, you know, you find out all the, the aspects that you like. And you can even, I feel, especially for me, like choosing a pathway based on a broad interest has led me to narrow it down and helps you get a step ahead in finding out what you want to do to college. I, I think that's great. And you, I, I think I tell students sometimes too, you'd be amazed what you discover about yourself if you right. just kind of push yourself a little bit more. And I think it just, it seems to guide you a little bit instead of being so broad, it it really guides you. Um, and you may actually decide this is not for me. Right. And yeah. maybe I thought this was for me. And so sometimes the opposite is true. So you might say, well, I've been in this pathway and it's not great. So instead of thinking about the, the skills that you've learned, I, I'm sure they're going to apply to anything. You might say, I don't want to go to this, but I know that now mm -hmm. rather than knowing it later or thinking about it later and then making a wrong choice. So there's never really a wrong choice, but it it may steer you toward sometimes it's the opposite. I know what I want to do because I went into this pathway and it wasn't for me. So I don't I don't think it's necessarily a bad choice. They're all skills. When you think about the soft skills that you'll learn in that pathway rather than you know, just those skills. Like a kid may not know that they want to go into the arts, but they like the arts. They have an affinity for it. Well, that's going to help you no matter what, because it's going to develop your creativity, mm -hmm. right? Your your ingenuity. And so oftentimes that, I mean, it doesn't matter who you are, as you move forward, that's something that can apply to, to life. So I think hearing, you know, students like you, like, I'm really excited about this. And like I said, meeting students who are super jazzed about what they're doing, um, it's very rewarding. So it's it's like, this is why we went into education in the first place, those of us that are teachers and administrators. And so it's really neat to see that. Yeah. And the high school choice process is underway right now yep. for these current eighth graders, as you know. Yes, sure. it is. And it is. I know this can be a stressful time for students and families because it seems like a lot of pressure and big decisions. But I'm sure that, you know, even our conversation now is going to relieve some of that. Um, oh, I hope so. But what are some important deadlines and not even deadlines, just events in this process where that students can have access to and that where they can access in this important information that yeah. um, they should know and what, you know, what resources are available for them to use? What should they look into? Sure. So um, we did have our choice fair. So that was um, in November where we had all 11 high schools um, out and kind of present, but not to worry if you missed it, it's okay. Um, what we're doing the next couple of weeks, so between now and Christmas break, uh, each of our schools are hosting a site night. So it's about two hours long. And so individually, um, parents can go and with their families, they can take their students and they can go and take a look at the variety of pathways. They can be on the campus. They can really hear specifics about that school. So um, if that's not something that's available to families or you know they're unable to get out to the site, our website has a lot of information. One of the good things that came out of COVID was we were really forced to put a lot of our information digitally online. Mm -hmm. um, and so parents and families can get that anytime they want. So they're going to go to our website. And if they go under H for high school choice for freshmen, they're going to click on that link. There's a whole timeline of events. And so 
Um, the application window will open in January. I believe it's January 5th. And so that will open. But before that, if they feel like they still need resources to make a choice, they can click on the link. It'll say high school uh, pathway websites. And so they can search one of two ways. They can search by individual high school and they can go to each of the pathways that are there or they can search by industry sector. So a student that's interested, for example, in law can go to the industry sector, click on law, and it will show you all the pathways that we have in our district that will offer law programs. And so they can kind of compare and contrast and see, okay, this school is my neighborhood school. They can see like a sample schedule. They can see their mission statement. So all those resources that were created last year online, we've sort of kept those and refined them and kept them better, made them better. Um, for families. And there's a little, there's a video vignette. You can see a little overview of the mm -hmm. pathway. You can see some students. And so really, if, if families aren't able to come to any of the in-person events, they can research all of it online. Um, they can certainly call our office and, you know, ask any questions that need to be done. But I, I would say that's that's a, a great way to get information for a current student. Um, they have received some lessons, hopefully, from their middle school counselors or a designated teacher um, where it's in there on the Canvas dashboard, there's a course that's called High School Choice. Mm -hmm. So there's some really cool lessons in there if they haven't done it already or they want to try it again. There's like a quiz they can take that puts them in a career cluster and some questions that they can answer. And then a parent who or a guardian who's a paired observer, anybody that's paired up with mm -hmm. that student, can actually go um, onto that course as well and take a look at all the resources that are available. So once um, you're a Long Beach Unified uh, School District student or you've registered through Parent View, you can get access to all that information. So there's a lot of virtual resources and certainly a lot of um, in-person resources as well. But yeah, every student in that wants to go to high school in Long Beach Unified, whether you're a current student or whether you're outside of the district, is going to apply for, for a pathway. So you can't you can't escape us. We're, we're <laughs> going to get you some way, shape, or form. But every student will apply for a pathway in Long Beach Unified. So um, there's a lot of resources out there for parents. So it can be, I think, confusing at first. But once you begin to kind of dig through, there will be a tipping point where you'll go, okay, um, you know, maybe I'll get this. I, I think as a parent, you know, having conversations, you can decide maybe the first one is, do I want a big school or a small school? Mm -hmm. You can maybe eliminate about half of them from there. And then you got to think, okay, residential, do I want to venture far away? How do I want to search for these things? And I think, again, by word of mouth, a lot of kids are, I think by now in the process, they're narrowing it down and they're, you know, figuring out a little bit about where they want to go and, and what they want to do and what will work for them. So it's an exciting time. It's full of possibilities for kids. Right. And and um, certainly there's a lot of opportunities out there for kids. Yeah, definitely. And I'm so glad we had this conversation. I think it's very clarifying for anyone who is going to go through the high school choice process, who's going through it now, you know, to have these resources. Um and I think a lot of what we talked about is, I wish I would have had that. You Me know, it's, too. It's very, <laughs> it's very helpful to know that <laughs> yeah. everything's going to be okay. No everything's matter what Everything's going to be fine. It's going to be great. And, you know, our high school, our, the, the pathways are so, they're, they're so successful. And the kids are graduating really having, again, exposure to a lot more career choices, I think, than before. And taking classes, hopefully, mm -hmm. in an area that is of interest to them. And so it wasn't just, oh, let me pick a school because they have a good basketball program. Right. It's, I'm going to try to pick something that is of interest to me and really will make it worthwhile um, in the future. So it's exciting. And I, I appreciate you having me on the, the podcast. I feel like we could keep talking for hours about this. <laughs> but uh, no, I think it's helpful. And hopefully mm -hmm. we've provided some information for a lot of parents. And, oh, yeah. And yeah. at the very least, they know that there's people that will help them. There's resources that will help them. And that this is a process to be excited about. Absolutely. It's it's a neat thing and, and we're kind of on the cutting edge. So mm -hmm. uh, we look forward to, to kids applying and, and having a great high school experience. And so I appreciate you having me. Yes. Thank you so much. All right. For thank you. Coming.